CosmicRadio.tv. Welcome to Cinema Talk. Talk. Rafi. We watch movies with you so you don't have to. Welcome to Cinematography. I'm your host, Roberto Vegas, joined by... Brant Hughes. Hey, Arnold! We're actually finally doing some television stuff, and... We... Whoa! <laughs> Is that how you're going to... Yeah. You're just going to like, whoa! Whoa, Nelly, we're it's doing... It's exciting! Te- it's new! I'm... <laughs> It's challenging me. I don't know what to think, Roberto. <laughs> so we decided to do essentially our sort of favorite Nicktoons. Uh, we'll probably yeah. visit these sort of things again because we, you know, we've watched a lot of random television over our years. Uh, whereas I picked an episode of Rocco's Modern Life, you picked an episode of Hey Arnold, and we're actually gonna kick it off. So why don't you explain what episode we're watching today? Uh, today we are watching episode eleven of season one, entitled Arnold's Christmas. Yeah, this is actually a very touching episode for Christmas Story, and yeah. a lot more for that. So let's just get into this now. Move it, football head. <laughs> okay, so this is how it works. We're going to play an audio excerpt from this week's film, typically with three distinct beats, and we'll all start the film from the zero second mark on the final beat of that sync cue. That way we stay synced to your viewing experience. Sound good? Here we go. I always love that every Christmas episode of any series has to have, like, the Christmas version of the theme. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Which I'm all right with that, you know? I am too, but, man, I wish we could have... As much as I love this episode we're going to watch, I wish we could have heard the Hey Arnold Yeah, because it's so uh, iconic. It it really is. It's like, here we go, here we go, here we go. (laughs) Like, it's so much You can't help but sing along, like, every time time. you hear it. Oh, because, yeah. It's so great. This was a weird time in television uh, because mm-hmm. this is during sort of the rebirth of animation. Like right now we're in this sort of not downward spiral of animation, but we're definitely mm-hmm. in a in a, 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 a lull in American animation. Like okay, we have yeah. it, yeah, um, but not as much as it was back then. I mean, this was, you know, where we had all the adult shows kicking off even in animation. Like, like this was during the era when David Spade had a cartoon. Really? Yeah. Did you know Weird. this? Like, yeah, David Spade had the Spade show. Oh, I, I feel like I remember hearing about that. Yeah. I didn't. I had no idea that that was. Yeah, it was a thing. Wow. Like, like I, I could. I, this was back in the era or beginnings of this era was when Hammer had a had a cartoon show called Hammer Time. So this is like whoa. When just, <laughs> there, I I have only seen the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> That is this glacier of weird cartoon oh, stuff. Oh, we could go d- like that is a <laughs> that is a rabbit hole. I could take it down, and it is a dangerous rabbit <laughs> hole, sir. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Arnold, for me, every episode of this always takes me back to um to like second, maybe third grade, um. Watching this on our brand new 60 inch TV, which was like half the depth of our living room. Um, <laughs> and I'd watch it, you know, in the morning right before walking to school. For me, Hey Arnold, like, again, it's, it's such a weird thing because I was, because you're like, what, how old when this came out, if you had to guess? Because I was definitely way older than you. Uh, I know that. When was this, like 98? Something like that. 97? Like, I was, so like, I, I was in, in, or, in high school when this came out. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was in middle school. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's weird for me because I was, I was older enough and, and probably shouldn't have been watching quote unquote cartoons. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I still did. Like I, I, I watched it and, and, and understood kind of what I was watching and what that meant. Um, I love this. Our first Helga moment. Our first. Oh, <laughs> so here's a question. Yeah. Um, all right. We, we got to ask uh, when it comes to Arnold, who would you okay i'm gonna ask you the question who do you think he ends up hooking up with as he grows older and, and who do you want him to hook up with as he grows older man you're asking me we're we're like two minutes I, in roberto and you already asked me to ship arnold <laughs> we have oh, to oh man you know that's what it comes down to yeah <laughs> so okay what are you shipping with i don't know man like 
I don't know. I, I'm always of the the alternate universe type shit when it comes to shippings. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I believe he, he he marries Phoebe. You know, I would be totally on board with that. <laughs> like Phoebe is just in the right range for him. Like I feel like you know that that one girl that he's he's L- kind of uh, Lila. Yeah, Lila. Lila's not right for him. No, not obviously not. No. I mean that that is that she, is a she's, fling. She's a floozy <laughs> and 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 and, and uh, a harlot. <laughs> I'm sure. sure. Why sure. not? Because we're saying this on this. Uh, and then there's, I think there's also an older girl that he's kind of got a uh, crush on. Ruth McDougal. Yeah, Ruth McDougal. <laughs> McDougal is such an absurd last name. <laughs> what's What's even more absurd is I remember this stuff. Yeah. How do you? I don't know. I don't know. There's a portion of my brain that's reserved for Nicktoons. Yeah. And, and 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 all sorts of bizarre trivia of this series, because it's such a. I mean, what's cool about this show for me, and 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 I think I don't know if it ki- kicked off ninety eight. What the devil check? What year fully kicked off? Because I think maybe mm-hmm. a bit sooner than this. I mean, it was late nineties, generally. Yeah, speaking. late nineties for sure. Um, for me, watching this now, like I remember why I, I liked it because like I grew up, even though I was in high school and, and maybe maybe not high school, like late middle school, whatever. Um, for me, it was this sort of series. I was like, oh, what's happening there in the city and and things like that. Mm-hmm. I realize we're we're getting finally into the actual like meat of this episode. Sure, yeah. Mr. Wynn? Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so this is kind of interesting. This is you know, Arnold is at least perceptive enough to know that Mr. Huin, there's something going on with him. Yeah. But um but you know, he's running through all of these these options in his kid brain that are like, Oh, are you sad? Here are things that could help. Do you want a sweater? Well yeah, because he doesn't um, Because, you know, Mr. Huin's uh what ails him is so much more deeply emotionally complex than Yeah, I mean look look at this now. We're in And no. really, I think at this point, we haven't even really done that much character development for Mr. Huynh. He's always just kind of been a background character. Because well, a lot of those characters we ever did. Yeah. And two, this is, I mean, like, um, I think, uh, I mean, he, he's Vietnamese. I think Mr. Huynh's Vietnamese, right? I think. Yes. I have to, I'll have to check what, he might be older. Let's, I'm going to just confirm. Sure. And also, this is just so... This is so dark for a Christmas kind of themed thing, right? Yeah, uh, I think this. Yeah, well, because again, looking at, at at the attire of of the the soldiers, that looks very Vietnamese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's from Vietnam. I was right. All right. Oh. I'm breaking out the feels early. Well, it's because it's such a, like, it is, I mean, let's put it this way. It, it, this is a story about a father giving up his daughter because he knows that she would be, that, that she couldn't survive in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. During the Vietnam War, sure, yeah, you know, one of you know, they don't touch on it too much in in the in the story, but I mean that like them putting that in there, that was you know, I, I, there's a lot of you know we, before we we started talking about this, there's another episode where, where we'll talk later <laughs> on that sort of thing, sure. But that being said, like I mean, Vietnam War, that was a pretty damn serious thing, and, yeah. And, and the one thing about this this episode that I love is that. This is like a kids show. Keep in mind this, mm-hmm. people, that this is like a, a you know, like like they're talking about Monkey Man and stuff <laughs> like that. And Arnold's like, right. motherfucker, I just heard about Nom. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I was told about Nom and war and like fathers. Gerald, up- <laughs> I've seen <laughs> some shit. shit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, like he is, he is, a, he is grown up. Mm-hmm. Like, and I love this. He's like, I got to find this girl. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal that, you know, they go from having episodes about like, oh no, we got detention. Or <laughs> oh no, we have to sell Girl Scout cookies <laughs> to, to Oh, oh no, no. Mr. Got- Huynh lost his child 20 <laughs> years ago and has been separated ever since and is uh, horribly depressed because well, of it. Well, because it's like, we got to find this girl and it's 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 so, so heartbreaking. Because again, we see this this very much this, this parallel of things because we see Helga like going through like, you know, going through all these gifts and stuff, trying to get Harold, you know, Arnold a gift and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I always like that Arnold seemed like a pretty resourceful kid. Because he lives in the city. I mean, you have to be. You live in a city. You're going to be going through, you know, subways and stuff like that. Sure. <laughs> oh, look, that, that's, that's a party. That, that music in the background sounded a little bit like the Harold theme, just you know, adapted you, for piano. We missed something earlier on, but you can tell it was a party because one of the guys had a lampshade on. <laughs> of course. Getting crazy. Up in the bureau. (sighs) Now, I should probably state this about uh, Vietnamese people, uh, you know, last names. Mm -hmm. When is like the most common last name? Right. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Like the spelling is different for sure than the usual uh, win because usually N Y U G E N. Uh, but when in general is like the most generic. It's like I'm looking for John Smith, right? I, you know, like <laughs> what do you think about uh, Ar- Arnold's animation style? Um, I've always um. I've always liked it um, in its simplicity for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I always thought it was a, a definitely better because, like, out of all the Nicktoons animation, I think the only one I really hated was like the Rugrat style. Yeah, and that uh, that that specific, specifically that company, like uh, I forgot always was like Caps or something or whatever. I never really okay. dug the style at all. Uh, but hey, Arnold, I always liked because it sort of it it bordered this sort of complex and simplicity at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes like every now and then the animation can be a little bit crude here and there. Yeah. But I mean, there's always so much character and personality yeah. and everything that it uh it more than well, makes up for. Well, because you it. know, much like any other good show, it improved for sure as the seasons went yeah. along. It got way better. Yeah, because this is still pretty early on. And yeah, the, exactly. The Arnold legacy. But I always, I, I always dug again for me. I always dug the way they presented the city, uh, mm-hmm. because it just looked so. You know, for me as a kid in the suburbs, like I've never been to the city. That looks amazing, and mm-hmm. you know, I wish I was a kid. I, I had grown up as a kid in the city, because right. I would have had so much fun. You know, with fire hydrants and stuff like this, and everything else like that. Because they really, they really show off the cityscape. Like we have, you know, yeah, skyscrapers totally. in the background, stuff like that. And never, I'm. It's not like I, you know, it's not like we ever see any of our characters in like a house. Mm-hmm. You know, they're yeah. all in like apartment complexes and st- and sure. maybe, maybe boarding houses, something like that. Yeah, I think I th- I want to say it was all kind of modeled off of a mixture amalgam between Chicago and New York. Exactly. Um, now, it always read as Chicago to me as a kid. Now here's the question: What do you think of all the other character designs of people? Like you know, Arnold, we have the the whole football head sort mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, Gerald, we have the bong head. We have the freaking fro yeah. of doom. Um, yeah, I I think it's all it's weird. And yeah. it's, it's something that I never really considered much as a kid. Um, I'm fine with it, but... You know, I never considered much as a kid. It now is I think, pretty weird. I think about now, how multiracial uh, Hey Arnold is, how, yeah. how international it is, because we have like a lot of different people. I mean, obviously, you know, Arnold and Gerald are, 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 are that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. we don't think... I don't even think about it, to be honest, when I think right. of the character. But now looking back on it now, like we have Mr. Wynn in, in, in the boarding house. We have we have Oscar, the kind of mm-hmm. uh, of Eastern European descent. Yeah. We have a lot of, of, of people there. Hey, look, it's cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, there is there is quite a bit of diversity. There's actually, there's actually is... A, by the way, before we continue, there is a, a uh, paper RPG called cyberpunk. Huh. Well, there you go. Anyways... 
Yeah, I was just saying, you know, there there is a pretty good amount of diversity, which obviously as a kid you really don't think about. But No, yeah, I didn't even think about it until now. I'm glad I didn't think about it. I'm glad it became – for me, I'll be honest, I'm glad that that didn't hit me until now I'm like as an mm-hmm. adult saying, oh, wow, it's kind of cool they did that. Uh, because I'm glad I didn't think of it because sure, that yeah. means it, it just felt normal to me. Uh, but it's cool knowing, you know, cause like even there's like, you know, I think at times you see some, like, uh, you know, some of the, the Cuban population and stuff like that. So yeah, I would imagine like, that's why I'd think New York and that sort of thing, mm-hmm. um, when it comes like Puerto Ricans and, and, and that's that portion of Hispanic culture. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Try a little harder, Helga. <laughs> Cheryl's the best I know <laughs> Oh it seems like a pretty pretty accurate retail kind of yeah that that's experience that's what happened when i when i when i was a kid i asked can i get a copy of final fantasy 7 yeah this is exactly this is or or when i went and and asked hey do you have a copy do you have a ps3 in stock like come back here hey joe come you know from the other department (laughs) what what are you asking for yeah do you have his playstation 3 in stock (laughs) are you kidding me that's what happened to me Hmm. also happened the same time when i asked if they had an you know any other system so right now we're getting yeah, a, a good taste of music. Maybe not my my standout music throughout yeah. the whole episode, but you know that that's one of the the most iconic things of Hey Arnold throughout oh, the yeah. throughout the entire series is, you know, they had Jim Lang on as a composer and what has he done beyond Hey Arnold? I'm not sure. I think he's done a little here and there, but you know that always seemed like his big claim to fame, and it's phenomenal. Like improvisational jazz stuff oh god yeah no like, it's uh if, for for the viewers if if you want to go uh look up my favorite track uh go search for uh groove remote by jim lang all right that, me, that is my absolute let favorite. me make sure this is if it's who i think it is because he said it was you said jim lang worked it collaborated soundtrack uh i think he did most of the original compositions for let me let me make Am. sure because uh No snow boots, no deal. Yeah, I got that tattooed on my back. <laughs> is that is that the, yeah. the creed you live by? It's right underneath Thug Life. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm trying to um, find. I'm trying to. Yeah, f- this this is a uh, kind of one of one of the standout moments in just that. Um, Harold has. I always viewed one of its greatest strengths in being that it wasn't ever afraid to have these down moments. These these moments of, of solemn contemplation and, you know, not everything's working out for them and it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to kind of uh, feel things, you know, which a lot of, a lot of kids shows, you know, they try to really veer away from sadness. Well, cause you had to be happy. You couldn't, you could not be, um, you know, anything. All right. So Jim Lang uh, has worked, of course, on Hey Arnold. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has also worked music wise. If you're ever curious, the all filmography portion where he's composer at, he has worked in other shows such as I'm trying to find something actually interesting. Oh man. Oh. Uh, you you don't really see it much in this episode, but Helga's mom is like uh, an alcoholic, a, a huge, huge alcoholic. alcoholic. Yeah, like I almost considered her writing like uh, fucking scholarly edu- like articles about her mom's alcoholism 
Oh yeah, no Helga. Helga's mother is a whole hardcore alcoholic, and it's so it gets pretty messed up. Yes, it does. <laughs> like, there's one point where I think there's an episode where she's like, she fell asleep, and like, like even the idea of like she falls asleep and like nods off and just like leads her leaves her daughter to her own whims. Oh my god, like. Her first day of kindergarten or something, yeah. and her mom just doesn't pack her any food, nope. and she like doesn't drive her to school or anything. But the greatest part about that episode, uh, what's great about that episode, and what I like about that, was that that was the first uh, uh, th- uh, part. That was the first time any because like you know that episode was a, that's a great w- moment too, where mm-hmm. she's all depressed, where he's all she's like talking about this moment why she. You know, kind of hooked in. You know, even remotely got a crush on Hey Art. Oh my god, god damn it! He's thinking of Nom. <laughs> it's let's, so great. Let's put that in there. He is. He is. He is. He is considering what Nom is. I expect him to be watching like Full Metal Jacket at, at this point in time in history. He is in arguably one of the coolest rooms on the planet. That too. And he's sitting there thinking about uh, no. <laughs> Mr. Huynh's <laughs> daughter 20, 20 years, years ago. ago in Vietnam right. during the Vietnam War. Uh, but no, back to that moment in that episode. I know we're, we're talking about this episode, but I don't want to mention mm-hmm. that because uh, when's the next time we're going to talk about Hey Arnold? Uh, what I love about that episode is that for Helga, the moment she remembers is that you know, and this is of course something we're showing now because she is right now giving away her her most prized possession to make the the boy that she cares about happy mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Um, because she like you know she loves Arnold probably more than than she actually would admit at times. Sure, and uh, you know this moment especially shows just how tragic of a character that Helga is. In that, you know, she feels so deeply that she will go well out of her way to do something nice for Arnold well, without ever letting Arnold know. Well, because Helga's a very complex character because she's selfish at times. She's mm-hmm. she's bratish because, she, you know, she's her upbringing has been strange. I mean, she has the father who is the beeper king. Right. Uh, and, and kind of a jerk off, you know, kind of a mm-hmm. jacket, you know, kind of one of those I- idiot people that we don't like to deal with. And living that the, Brock life. He's right. A, Real jerk. Right. Well, then we have, of course, the mother who's kind of alcoholic. And so, you know, when she goes to kindergarten that episode, you know, all the kids pick on her and make fun of her. But this weird little football headed thing guy, you know, <laughs> boy. <laughs> this this weird <laughs> mutated well, creature of the well, darkness. <laughs> well, essentially Arnold, yeah. you know, brings in the umbrella, shares food with her and things like that. And she's like this boy showed me kindness. I have mm-hmm. never been shown kindness before by anybody. Right. That's why she got mean and was a jerk and things like that. And and it's it's tragic because, like, if she felt she didn't have to be tough, I think you know those two could have hooked up a lot sooner. Sure. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, she is de- definitely a very much a product of her upbringing and yeah. A, and her lo- parents have sown that weird aggressive. And I love and I love how because it, through Arnold. It's becoming this, I'm trying to be a better person um, mm-hmm. with her motif. And I enjoy that. And of course, yeah, it's cool. This is so fucking amazing. <laughs> Look at that slow motion. Oh. God damn it, Oscar! <laughs> Oscar, we could we could we could have a whole ep- we could have a whole episode about what's wrong with Oscar. <laughs> and now he's not even my f- and my honestly my favorite one is the butcher. Yeah, that is my favorite. Not butcher, sorry. What's over that guy with the, the, the short ha- the sh- hammer dude? Yeah, he is my favorite all time of of, of the residents. <laughs> he's he's a weird one for sure. Aww. 
despite that being a little bit stalkery and kind of weird that Helga's just like looming outside of his it's, house. It's fucking it's, touching. It's, it's, it's super so, sentimental. It's so and sentimental. Really great. It's so touching. It's like, like I said. I mean. I want to believe. I mean, that's way less creepy than the time that Helga slept in Arnold's <laughs> oh, closet. God, so many. We, again, <laughs> we could have an entire like diet, like like a, 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 a you know maybe we'll one day add this as an extra stuff or something. Just marathon through every episode. Not even marathon, like just just discuss Helga as a character. Yeah, yeah. Because that that is a, a term paper right in its own right. Sure. All right, we're gonna uh, cut to our next thing. Oh. Uh, so we'll probably do another countdown for it. But stick around while we go into Rocco's Modern Life. Move it, football head. <laughs> hey, here we, Arnold. Here we go. Here we go. Bah. <laughs> this has been a CosmicRadio.tv production. For more awesome shows, head on over to our website, CosmicRadio.tv.